Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz, your host here at uh, Crimes Untold. And today we're going to be talking about the babyface killers. Uh, today we are discussing Cindy Collier and Shirley Wolf. So back on April 14th of 1995, the movie Fun was released. I bet you're wondering as to why I'm actually talking about this movie. Well, the plot of this movie is that of a 15-year-old girl and a 14-year-old girl who become friends and then one day decide to brutally stab an elderly woman to death after they are overcome by violence and rage. Well, this movie is based on a true story. Today we are discussing, like I mentioned previously, the case of 14-year-old Shirley Wolf and 15-year-old Cindy Collier. So, in the words of Wolf, Today, Cindy and I ran away and killed an old lady. It was fun. Direct quote. Cindy and Shirley lives were entirely similar prior to them meeting at a correctional institution. Cindy was raped prior to turning 10, and this was one of the causes of her resentment towards humans. Shirley was raped also when she was a child by her father, and she would bounce between family homes following this. She also would be full of anger, resentment, and rage. Their behavior would send them both to a correctional facility in June of 1983, where they would meet. And literally, it's the same day they met. As soon as they met, they were extremely close. They were like peanut butter and jelly, or flies on shit. Yes. The bond they had was extremely strong, and they would confide in one another about the things they did or want to do. Now, mind you, they literally just met a few hours prior, and were already planning on how to escape and live a life together. On the road, that is. So Cindy would plan that they would they would need a car. And they would need a car to proceed to, like, on what they were doing. And they would need this to proceed to, like, do anything. And Cindy is the one that said she knew how to get one. So they escaped from the correctional facility. And it was very easy for Sydney, it was Cindy, because she had previously done it before and was able to run away without being seen. So this was easy for her. So after the escape, it's a part of their plan that they would then go and steal a car. But not only that, they would also kill the person in, in either the car or the home of where it is. So they then planned that they would dye their hair red in a way to disguise themselves. So in a neighborhood near the facility... They would go door to door until someone would answer the door. This is where they then would get to Anna Brackett's house. So Anna Brackett was 85 years old, and they knocked on her door in Auburn, California. They would ask her to use her phone. She was kind enough to let them in. This would be her downfall. And after coming in, the girls and her would chat for, I think it's about an hour, and then they were taken off guard because her phone rang. So Anna answered the phone. It was her son. And her son said that he would be on his way so they could go on a walk. This is when the girls act. Shirley would assault Anna and then Cindy would run to the kitchen and grab a knife. She then would give the knife to Shirley, who then would proceed to stab her to death. Anna was stabbed a total of 28 times, or at least 28 times. They are not sure. And they are not sure because the knife entered the same wound multiple times. So they are unsure exactly how many stabs there was, but there was at least 28. After she was in fact dead, they ran out of the house and would go to Cindy's house. They didn't even take the car, which was a part of their plan. So Anna's son would get to her house and he would discover her body shortly after the death happened. He then would call the police. The neighbors then were questioned and they were quick to mention that there was two teenagers that were in the neighborhood. And one of the teenagers they actually recognized. And they recognized this as Cindy Collier. After this, the police would go to Cindy's house and they questioned the girls separately. Both girls were tried, and due to the fact that they were juveniles at the time of the murder, they would receive the maximum sentence or penalty for their convictions, which would mean they would be imprisoned until they turned 25. So this just means they got 10 years in prison. I will say, too, that they ended up 
bathing and changing their clothes, and they tried to discard any evidence that could pin them to the death of Anna Brackett, but basically a slam dunk. So, that, my friends, is the Babyface Killers. I hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you guys in another video.